Okay. Here comes the music talk. We're going to do our best. So please don't laugh at us. Uh, this is, this isn't exactly our, uh, our expertise, but uh, I'm going to start here. So you guys released two new singles, uh, 100,000 people in the bandit. They are out anywhere. You can stream music. Uh, your eighth studio album, uh, when you see yourself is coming out March 5th, right? Yep, exactly. March 5th. So that, that is, that's right around the corner. Now, my first question is, you know, we, we've talked a lot about how difficult it was this year for sports to happen, right? Especially yeah. football. You know, there was a lot of doubt about whether or not college football would get played, the NFL get, would get played, but it has worked out. But concerts have just ceased to exist. And, you know, me and Caroline were supposed to meet you and Martha in London in June and go to one of your shows. And like, obviously that didn't happen. So like, what has that this year been like for you as a musician, no concerts, no live music. It's gotta be weird as hell. It is weird. Um, and we're in a weird position and you guys are in a similar position to where there's not really a right answer and people can call you out on either way you look at it. Like you could say, um, like, I hate the lockdowns. They're so stupid. I don't want to be locked down. I think they're bad. And people are like, oh, you're sitting in your mansion. It, you, you don't have to worry about income. Like you're going to boo-hoo over being locked down. And so you're like, okay, cool. Like, I think the lockdowns are great. I get to be with my family. It's awesome. I'm kind of a lazy person. I just get to sit around and like, well, of course you like the lockdown. <laughs> You're sitting in your mansion with your money. Don't have to worry about income. Like I've got to work, you know? So you kind of get put into a thing to where I've just shut up about it and don't, you can't really have a right answer. And I'm just kind of letting it all happen. But it is weird not playing shows. It's that's my life. That's all I've ever done, really. I mean, I joined the band when I was 15. Um, and I miss it really, really bad. But it has been pretty awesome being able to and my daughter was born in January of 2020. Um, and just to get to be with her and be home. It's been pretty cool. There's been a lot of silver linings to all this. So I imagine maybe a lot of the hay was already in the barn with this album before the lockdowns, maybe not, but how has that affected like kind of some of the songwriting process and the way that you guys record and, and just the whole way that you put together an album, was that a big roadblock or in a way, did it make things easier? Maybe. Um, it definitely, well, well, we were done. So we had written the songs and we had gone to the studio and we had finished it, but we are we always second guess ourselves constantly so before this even happened we were like it, it was so hard to stop and just say like okay we're finished the album is done we're not going to do anything else we're not going back because we could have done it forever we worked longer on this one than we have on any other album we were in there for 10 or 11 months which is unheard of we've never spent more than two months ever so we finish it we're like yes we're done and then boom they're like everything just goes to crap and so we know that it's not going to come out for three months maybe six could be a year and so then it, that is a huge thing of going like oh my god and I just didn't text anybody and they didn't text me and I'm just going please don't talk about going back in there like it's good let's leave it the way it is don't mess with it so it, it was a really hard but we didn't actually do anything, but the not doing anything was very hard and uncomfortable. You're just so nervous that people are going to start second guessing and Caleb wants to scrap the album and we start over and I jump off a bridge that cold. <laughs> yeah. Now, one thing that, you know, I, I know just because we talk essentially every day is your guys fans were really after you about, hey, where's the new album? Where's the new album? Where's the new album? And like you said, it was, you know, you guys had, had done pretty much all the hard work, but you you have to factor in the business side of things, right? Where you can capitalize on the momentum and go play shows after you're releasing all those things. So like, how frustrating was that? Just having your fans being like, what the hell guys? Yeah, it's excruciating really because you know it's there 
we know that we're happy with what we did. We're excited about it. Um, and you can't tell them because we don't know when it's going to be released. You cannot tell your fans, hey, we, we're done with the album. It's sitting right there on the shelf, but we're not going to release it for a year. So it, the, the thing is, when we make an album, we want to be able to present the entire album to our fans. We want to be able to play shows. We want to be able to give them the whole thing and not just cash in and say like, okay, cool. We're not playing any shows. We're going to sit on our ass for a year, but here, take the music and buy it and give us some money for it. We want the whole thing for everybody. And we knew at that time, and honestly, still right now, it's not safe. We can't play concerts. You can't fit thousands of people into a, a small arena indoors. Um, so we had to just be very quiet about it and not tell people until we can give them the entire thing. And it sucked and it hurt, but it was the right thing to do. I'm always fascinated in the, like the daily life of a professional musician, because like, for instance, for football players, a lot of people watch, you know, football on a Sunday and feel like, well, that team just practiced the way I did when I was in little league and they show up on Sunday and they play football. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people see musicians and feel like, well, they just, they know their songs already. They just show up <laughs> and, and play them. So what is, what's a typical day like? Because obviously for athletes, there's, there's diet, there's lifting weights, there's all the film study. Like what's a typical day for you? How much do you play? How much do you song write? Like what's a typical day being a musician for you? Um, it's probably different for all musicians really, but I think that it's way easier than what you guys do. Way less work, way less mental, way less everything. Cause I mean, you basically do chunk work, huge chunks. It's like if you guys went to camp for eight weeks and then played football on PlayStation for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of season, yeah. I love that. So we do all the work up front. You write the songs and you do all that and that is horrible and it's a heavy lifting thing and then you learn all the songs but learning songs it's like a bike you it's it's um, it's hard to forget them you have muscle memory and so I can pick up a bass right now and without thinking if I think about it too much I will mess up but if I just don't think about it I'll just play it all and it comes out um so all of our work is kind of done beforehand um and then it's just kind of like trying to stay passionate about it and, you know, keep it real and not just go through the motions. But uh, I really don't play that much. I play guitar all the time. I'm a bass player. I don't, I haven't played bass in forever. It's going to hurt and it's going to suck when I have to start playing again. And I've got to relearn these songs that I haven't played in a, a year and a half. I don't remember them. I don't even remember the names of them. <laughs> <laughs> now. Okay. So, you know, like we've been, close friends now for a long time and I, i've never heard you as fired up and as into the the work you guys have been doing than w what you've done for this album and I, I think it's because you were more involved in a lot of things and a lot of the writing and how nervous are you for the reviews because that that's it's still a big thing in music uh, from what I've been told by you. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, because when, when you're playing football, right. A lot of people for the, for the, for the majority of people, like they can see, they can watch a guy and be like, okay, yeah, that guy's playing well, mm -hmm. but for music, like everyone has their own taste and they, they have what they like. And, and so it's like, when you get reviews done, it's like, okay, well, even though these people love it, some people may hate it. Like how, how nervous are you for the reviews of the album and all that stuff? Uh, I'm always nervous and I only read the negative stuff. It's um, weird. Um, and I feel like I can learn from that. And, and sometimes you can't, sometimes they're just, I hate this word, but sometimes they're just haters and they just might not like anything about us you know they they just might not like us they might not like the way that one of us looks in the band and so you're always like i don't like that band because there's just one guy that i don't really like the way he looks 
So there's a lot of like unfair criticism. And a negative but, review might get more clicks and people, you know, always write for clicks. Absolutely. hundred percent. So it, I do get nervous about the reviews and I want people to love it. Um, and like you said, you know, like this was more collaborative overall. Caleb really let us in on this one and bounced everything off of us. And we kind of, you know, helped out more than we ever have before. Um, and, and you love it. You, it's, it's very uncool to like your own music. You're not supposed to say it. You're not supposed to like your own art. It's not like the cool thing. But it's impossible not to because I know what I like. And I do what I like. It's like making food for yourself. If you know you don't like cilantro and you like a lot of salt, you make your own food, you're going to like that more than somebody else who made you food and it has a bunch of cilantro and salt. So it, you, it, it's hard not to like what you do. And you're not supposed to, and I'm not supposed to say it. But I, <laughs> but I just did, and I like the album. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I see uh, the headlines now. I see oh, the headlines God. now. <laughs> hey, so take us through the process a little bit. So whenever you guys are, are trying to pound out songs and you're writing music, I mean, are you just like uh, in the shower and a bass line comes to you and you get your phone and you kind of like hum it into your voice memos and then send it to someone and then they record it and see how, is or, that kind of how it works? Or, or you're drunk on a plane <laughs> back from the 50th birthday party of a crown prince. Yeah, I mean, that too. That was an awfully specific <laughs> example I just threw out there. Yeah. No, I've done the voice memo shower thing for sure. Um, but mainly it's just playing and almost like zoning out a little bit and you stumble upon something and you're like, that's cool. I, I rarely write something in my head and then play it. I, I'm almost always playing it and then it, it, something just comes out of it. And I will do the voice memo thing and I send it to the guys in the band and like we, we, we basically all compile about four or five ideas to ourselves, Caleb, probably more. Um, and then we all come in and we all play our ideas and just jam. And if something catches, it catches. And if it doesn't, you just throw it away. Um, and that can suck. But this album was pretty well like split up, you know? There's a few of Caleb's, a few of Matt's, a few of mine. You know, Nate was there. <laughs> no, Is it uh, true that the hits like just happen instantly, like almost write themselves, that it just comes out and you hardly, hardly spend any time on those? Not for us. Um, it's happened. Our producer's good at that. He'll be like, no, that's good. You guys can. And we're like, no, no, no. Like that one kind of sucks. Like let's at least work on that. He's like, no, it's fine. Um, and re I remember when the record label came down for only about the night and you, somebody came on and the dude who was the head of the label turned, he stood up and turned around and like clapped for us. And he'd never done that. And we were all just like, cause you, somebody was maybe a B side. We thought it was kind of cheesy. And we, we were teetering on maybe not making it. We had played him the whole album and he clapped for that one. And we were like, shit. And then Caleb really got self-conscious about it. And he was like, I like, I think these guys think this is a hit. It's not the coolest song. They're going to push it a ton. People are going to think we're not cool. <laughs> and so there is a sense of it just being immediate, but it's not immediate for us. Sometimes it's just immediate for the people who you pay to know what is supposed to be immediate, I guess. Now, as, as far as your music goes, you guys have those diehards, right? That are like, they're, they're going to like anything you put out. Then you've got the people that are like, I want stuff that, like the first three albums. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just hilarious to me because that was so long ago. And I, I don't know how they don't expect music to change as you guys age. And like you go through life, it, it doesn't, I, that has never made sense to me, but when, when I hear, and I've, you know, heard a lot of the album and when I hear these singles, like it seems like there is definitely a different sound to this album. And uh, are you worried about how that is going to be received? Are you excited? Like, was that the goal to try to change up the sound or is it something that just kind of happened? 
No, I mean, it was definitely a goal to grow and just try to just go a little bit different of a direction. I mean, I don't expect people to like us through everything. Um, and there are so many bands that I liked their first few albums and then I didn't really like anything after that. A lot of bands, I like their only their first album and then it gets bad after that. Um, but there are also bands that I like their seventh album and I don't really like their early stuff. Um, I mean, I like the Beatles later stuff than I do their early stuff. I'm not a big early Beatles guy. I love what they became but the kind of super, super smiley, happy, poppy stuff at the very beginning is not as cool to me. I don't think it's bad at all. Um, it's just not as exciting as, you know, what they got to. And I think it's just so boring if a band would do eight albums that all sounded alike. I mean, I can't even imagine what you would get out of that. Why not try and fail, you know, to change and be innovative with yourself? than just do the same thing over and over. That to me is selling out, doing the same thing over and over because you think you can make money. That's like a, a, a chain restaurant. So it sounds like you're a Beatles fan. And I was thinking of this earlier when Gabe said that they were supposed to go to London to see one of your shows. Now I may have this wrong, but was it weird that you guys kind of blew up in England before you did over here? Was that maybe as a Beatles fan, was that something that was awesome or how did, how was that whole thing mentally? It was incredible. Yeah. I mean, cause I was super young. I was like 16 and we're going over there and we, we played a few shows in America uh, and Atlanta and there were like maybe 40 people there because we were opening up. And then we played our own show in Birmingham the next night, Alabama. And there were like, I swear to God, seven people, including the bar staff. <laughs> we played for ourselves and we're just like, I, I mean, I guess we'll just rehearse. Um, and then we went over to England and the first show, it, it was probably 300 people, but the room fit like a hundred and it was packed and hot and sticky and people were falling onto the stage and I, I was pooping my pants. It was crazy i was very nervous but it was the coolest thing in the world and it was super weird for us because over here you're kind of isolated in america i mean you really don't know that much about what's going on in the rest of the world entertainment wise and then later on you find out about all of the other people who did the same thing including weird ones like the backstreet boys and all the way to like Jimi hendrix and all these people they were all big in england first and then came over um, and American record labels use that as a template big time. If you get big in England, they're like, there's a shot here and they bring them over. Um, but it was, it blew our minds hearing ourselves on the radio. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, Teddy, I've, I've been to shows of theirs in the United States. And then I also, uh, I went to a couple of shows when they played in Dublin, I met Jared out there. Uh, we, we were going on a Europe trip and I was like, Hey, let's, let's uh let's make make a trip out of this thing and I'll, I'll catch a couple of shows and it was the difference was nuts I, I I hadn't really understood it because I like he had told me like hey we're a little bit of a bigger deal in you know in the UK and in Europe and I was like okay I mean uh, but holy shit I was like okay yeah <laughs> no I get it it was it was wild dude yeah it's different it's definitely different okay now We've kept you a long time. I'm sorry. If you're wondering, the Titans are now down 17-10, but they're driving. Now, what's the best way for people to support the album? Because you come out with these singles, which normally now in today's music, like they just drop the whole album and it's on Spotify and you know Apple Music and all that stuff. But of course, you guys are doing it a little different. You've got the two singles out now, the album coming out in March, like, how do people support it? Is it download it on the streaming services? Is it buy the vinyl? Like what's the best way to support the new album? Um, I don't, I don't even know nowadays. I don't keep up much. I know that, you know, you basically as a musician now make money from concerts <laughs> and the rest of it, you're well, like pennies from this and that. Um, but I would just, I just want people to listen to it honestly. But for other artists, if you're, I think anything that you spend money on is better. 
like I, I downloaded the two songs on iTunes for $1.29 or whatever it is. And I assume that that's got to make more money than streaming it on Spotify. But for our albums, as long as you're listening to it and liking it, I really don't even care. I just want you to have it and like it. But it is on all the streaming services and you can buy it. And there are physical copies that are really cool that our art department it works with us and makes some really, really cool stuff that's worth having if you're if you're into the band um, and like cool vinyl stuff. And we've got a cassette coming out that's super cool. Um, but as long as you're listening, I'm happy. Final question for me. Like for uh, football players, I always wanted to play running back or quarterback. All defensive guys want to play offense. So mm -hmm. I'm sure maybe it's the same musician wise. If in, I heard you say you're a guitarist too, and maybe that's what you play more than the bass. If you could fill in one night, like someone went down in a big concert and they needed a guitarist to step in, what band would you want to play with? Oof. I thought you were going to say what instrument, and I was going to make a joke and say running back. But uh, <laughs> what band? Um, oof. Uh, I mean, honestly, probably just because I'm lazy and I know all their songs because I learned them when I was first starting and they were the coolest band in the world and they still are. Um, but probably the strokes. It's fun. I know the songs. They're cool. But I mean, to rip on some old, like, I don't know, any, any band that, that I could say, I mean, like, no, couldn't play that. They're too good. <laughs> no, can't play. I mean, I can't play in Led Zeppelin. I'm not, I mean, John Paul Jones is just, I, I need to be in my wheelhouse. So there's like three bands that I could choose from. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Jared, appreciate the time, buddy. Uh, this was fun. I feel like that. Uh, I feel like the music part wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. No, it was great. I felt like you guys kind of got to step outside of your little zone and you guys did great. That was fun. You don't mean that, but uh, I'll pretend <laughs> no. that because you guys ask weird, que not weird questions, but questions, a music journalist has their questions they're just going to ask you. And it's the same thing. You guys are asking like interesting questions that I don't get thrown at, you know, all the time. Murdoch is going to be so enraged when he listens to this interview. He's going to be like, they didn't ask anything good about the music. I'm like, dude, I don't know anything about the music. I'm sorry. What kind of tape did you use? <laughs> all right, Jay. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. This was fun.